Stop! Put that graphics card down! Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. Alright, so as you may have noticed, the current generation of GPUs draw a lot of power. I mean, especially if you take a look at NVIDIA and more specifically their RTX 3090, that GPU can draw anywhere between 350 watts all the way up to nearly 500 watts depending on which model you decide to go with. And I think this has caused a lot of problems for people, especially if you're someone out there who's doing something that I would consider to be bad practices when it comes to setting up your power supply and the cabling that comes with with it and this can actually lead to a scenario where you could you know in a worst case scenario at least uh, blow up your power supply melt the cables on your power supply or lord forbid actually blow up your gpu and of course when you know gpus are so hard to find right now the last thing you're going to want to do is just destroy the only thing you have so in order to you know get around that if you're someone who especially if you're an rtx 30 series owner i think it's highly important that you watch this video and share this video with as many of your friends as possible to try and get this message out to ensure that people stop blowing up their video cards because I've seen a lot more you know posts online talking about that uh, than I've seen from any other generation I think it has to do with the fact that GPUs draw a lot more power now than they used to in the past so it's led to scenarios where again uh, things that might have been okay in the past well they're not okay anymore and it's definitely gonna cause problems so what exactly am I talking about well I think the biggest issue and the most common mistake that I see PC gamers doing is they actually go ahead and use a cable like this and they use it incorrectly now the cable that I'm holding here is called a pigtail cable and so I think this is the biggest issue because what you can see here uh, is that there's not only just one 8 pin on each side but there's actually you know an 8 pin coming from the power supply and then you have dual 8 pins on the back or what I call a pigtail cable and what this does is you know in the past this type of cable here was actually pretty great because there were other cards out there uh, where they had maybe instead of you know a single 8 pin they'd have an 8 pin and a 6 pin or they'd have an 8 pin in an 8 pin but their total power draw was you know maybe 200 watts maybe you know 220 watts max well nowadays when you have cards like the RTX 3080 drawing just an insane amount of power or the RTX 3090 drawing even more power and those cards have two 8 pins well you're gonna run into trouble because a cable like that is technically only rated for 150 watts so I think you can start to see where the issues come into now before you panic the PCIe slot can also deliver an additional 75 watts but this is still nowhere near the amount that you would need for an RTX 3090 so if you add the 75 watts to the 150 watts the typical cables that are maybe not super high in quality are rated for well that gives you a total rating of 225 watts that you can deliver safely to that GPU and give that GPU a good clean power supply now of course there may be some cables out there which are rated for far far higher than that however as a rule I'm gonna stick to the 150 watt rating just to be safe and I think this is how you should go forward as well so if you take a look at the RTX 3090 uh, just on the founders edition which draws 350 watts and can peak much much higher and can go even higher than that if you overclock it and I, I believe it can actually go up to 400 watts on that GPU well if we take a look at that GPU at 400 watts and you have a single pigtail cable going into that RTX 3090 well you're only actually rated to be delivering 225 watts and again it can spike even higher than 400 watts so yeah you're going to run into some problems even maybe with some high quality power supply cables so what you need to do to ensure that you're not blowing up your gpu melting cables or blowing up your power supply is that if you are using one of these cables do not use the pigtail on the other side instead of just using one of these and splitting it into the pigtail and using it that way I highly recommend that you take another whole entire cable and you only use one of the eight pins on the end and you use two of them at the same time so instead of using one with two connectors you use two separate ones with one connector each and this is going to allow you to have a lot less issues and now when and where should you use this well as a rule of thumb when I have a GPU that draws over 200 watts I always decide to go with multiple cables and in fact if you have a GPU that draws even higher amounts of power and you have three 8 pins on the card I would recommend that you actually go ahead and use three separate cables because it's just going to give you the cleanest power I've seen uh, reports online of people getting better scores online when using multiple cables and it 
know, worst case scenario, it could actually save you from blowing up something in your system. So again, you know, as a rule of thumb, I say anything over 200 watts, uh, definitely use two cables. However, you know, according to the specs, you should be good with one pigtail cable, technically up to 225 watts. In fact, you might even be able to draw more than that, depending on the quality of your cable. But anything that draws over 225 watts, definitely be using two cables. Do not use a pigtail or daisy chain cable. You're definitely going to regret it because again, in a best case scenario, you might actually lead to some instability or lower scores. Worst case scenario, you might seriously damage some of your components. So hopefully this did end up helping you guys. I just wanted to get this message out here because it seems like not that many people actually talk about this problem. And I think it's a huge problem. It's probably like the second biggest mistake that PC gamers make other than not enabling XMP in their BIOS, which by the way, if you don't enable XMP in your BIOS, go into your BIOS and enable XMP. You bought the RAM. It's rated for that speed. Please run it at that speed. But in any case, um, yeah, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes PC gamers make. And hopefully now, if you are one of those people who's been doing that, you can sleep sound knowing that you are now using the best practices. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think is the biggest mistake PC gamers make? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.